hello and welcome to what I hope will be a new series of videos that I had this idea for. I want this to just be a casual paint and chat. Uh, I've got footage here of me having a painting session uh, that I did a few days ago, about an hour and a half, two hours. I just want to talk to you kind of podcast style so I'm not necessarily narrating uh, what I'm doing but I will touch upon it a little bit. So the first thing that you see me do here is I don't go straight into painting. It's because at this point in time I wasn't actually super inspired. I was feeling a bit nervous, not very there wasn't really specifically anything I wanted to paint, so I tidied my desk, I sharpened my pencils, and then I started just having a little look at all the colors of gouache that I have um, in my Arteza gouache set, and I was selecting some colors that I liked, just so that I could kind of start moving my hands, start doing something, but without really feeling like I'm gonna sit down to make some kind of masterpiece. It's a thing that I do to kind of kind of trick myself, I guess. The idea for this series is uh, comes from a few different places. So first of all, my friend Hap was saying that she puts my art tutorials on her ASMR playlist because she really likes listening to my voice. So I thought, okay, I don't, I'm not a big fan of my voice, but if other people are, <laughs> then that's really nice. So I wanted something that you can basically just switch on and you can either watch me and listen to me as a kind of dedicated thing whilst you're having a cup of tea or you can have me um, as a kind of soundtrack whilst you are doing your own paint, uh, painting work, art journaling, creative endeavors or whilst you're cooking dinner or whatever so um yeah i just um i hope that this is something that you might be interested in and something that might be useful to you and something that you might find fun uh, i often find it quite nice to have some company i guess whilst i am painting so either i listen to music or i will just kind of have something playing in the background um, like a, a vlog or something like that uh, or like a tv show that i know very well where i know i don't really have to watch uh, the screen to know what's going on. I think my go-to one for that is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, which I re-watch every so often. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge for me to not say um too much. I do notice when I edit my videos that I say that a lot and I'm trying not to do it so much. I wanted to talk a little bit about inspiration and perfectionism. I have noticed recently that I have been suffering from quite a lot of perfectionism and it doesn't really manifest itself as trying to make things perfect for me. It really manifests itself as just never getting started. And this video and this video series is a case in point because I have had this idea for a while and then I just end up not doing it. And the same thing with painting. I just spend so much time thinking and feeling anxious and then I do get to my paint table quite, you know, a regular amount, but probably not as much as I would really like to. And it's all part of that perfectionism. And also I haven't made a vlog in a while. And partly that is because I only vlog when I feel like it. I've made quite a strong boundary for myself that I am not going to vlog when I just don't feel like it. But then I also get into this headspace where I then maybe do want to vlog, but I get it into my head that I am not interesting. And that is just something that holds me back so much. I can't even get fully across how much that thought holds me back. It is just a um, a feeling and also a fear of just really not mattering. And I know it's uh, something that I tell myself, as in like it's not an objective truth. It is a feeling rather than a conscious knowledge. It's not like, um, you know, 
On a conscious level, uh, you know, in a brain way, I obviously know that what I do it is worthy and like I'm worthy as a person and I also know very well that people enjoy my videos like you are all telling me so often like how much you like my videos and how much you appreciate me sharing the things I share so I know that cognitively um, but then there is still a really strong feeling inside myself where I just feel quite um, I don't know this is gonna sound really strong but quite worthless and um, those two kind of sides they exist simultaneously so there's then the rational part of me saying like oh come on make another video because you know I like making videos or make more art because I like making art um, but then there's also this kind of worry of um, and feeling of not mattering at all and they are kind of at war with each other um, and it's not really there's not really anything practical uh, that I can do um, I can't go like, come on, self, um, pull yourself out of this. You know, that type of um, practical thinking doesn't really make a difference, unfortunately, because otherwise I'd be giving you all the tips here for, you know, <laughs> how to deal with these things. And I don't really have it figured out myself. Um, and I think I also feel kind of resentful in a way, like um, on a day where I feel so negative and where I feel like, you know, I'm worthless or like everything I do doesn't matter, makes no difference and stuff. I kind of feel resentful for feeling like that because I do know that it, when time passes, I will um, find a time again where I do feel motivated and I do feel like completely un on fire with what I'm doing. Um, but there is a process that has to be kind of gone through. The feelings have to be gone through. And um, and I feel like I feel like a like a tantruming toddler. I want to stamp my feet and go like, no, I don't want to feel badly. Like, get get out. <laughs> um, um, but it does. I think it does help cognitively at least to know that you know this too shall pass. Um, although sometimes I'm so deep into it that I don't even believe that or know that. Um, but um, sometimes I do. Um, so I'm kind of um, showing you here how I am working in my journals. You can see I've been going back between uh, a small journal and then a big journal. I was experimenting with my gouache, um, which I haven't used very much yet and I'm not very uh, proficient with. Um, but I like the fact that I've got so many different colors and I love color and I like just kind of boldly applying uh, color with the gouache and I'm also using some um, uh, some watercolors and also some acrylic and I applying pretty much everything with one brush and I occasionally I clean off the brush like I dip it in water and then I wipe it onto a, a piece of paper uh, and then I go to the next color and it was quite a nice process like I really kind of got into it um, and also kind of giving my, myself permission to really paint in a way that feels right in the moment I sometimes get quite like precise where I feel like oh I need to finish this up I need to make it look complete I need to spend time on it and stuff um, don't know like like a teacher saying to a child uh, student going like no you haven't put enough effort into that like go back and uh, fill every single bit of blank space but then I also realized that that unfinished quality is actually something nice and it's something I want to embrace um, and not I think I'm always kind of fighting against this militaristic really harsh inner critic I guess inside myself um, and instead try to be a bit more free and um, and I know that it might surprise you because I know that my work looks very free. It's like, oh my god, Iris, you've got this freedom thing in your art down. Like, what are you, what are you moaning about? But it's, um, it's something that although I'm able to put onto the page very easily, um, uh, well, not easily, but it's it comes out in a way that may look easy. But I think the kind of the process can still be quite difficult, and it's definitely. Um, like a fight or, a, or an inner dialogue that sometimes um, I have to fight for. 
And um, so you can see that I am uh, starting a new page here and I was just starting with some automatic writing. I love doing that. That is one of my favorite ways into my own kind of uh, connection with myself, subconscious, whatever you want to call it. Oh, you might be interested to know that this video is sped up, uh, I think about four times speed. Um, so the video itself is about 20 minutes, but I think I spent about, you know, an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half. I mean, what is maths? I don't know. Uh, 60, 120. Yeah, like an hour and 20. <laughs> I know you don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I spent about that much time uh, on this whole session. And... Um, just kind of going back and forth between things I sometimes I will work in a session and I just get completely into the one thing that I am doing um, and I just work start to finish on one thing but then other times when I am kind of just wanting to be more I don't know flip from one thing to another um, I might you know work on something let the paint dry and then, um, you know, whilst the paint is drying, move on to something else. Um, I do find that when it comes to um, a big journal like this, this is an A4 journal, it's a little bit easier to um, uh, let things dry whilst you're working on a different part of the page. Whereas when you're working small, um, you know, when you've got a whole wet page, it's quite difficult to kind of keep going. Although I do kind of ignore that too sometimes where I just work kind of with a pencil scratching into the wet layers and stuff like that. Um, my um, applicator bottle is what you see me using here with black paint and a little bit of airbrush medium to keep it flowing through that needle tip. Um, I love this both as a way of expressing myself and just as a way of creating this really awesome texture. Um, I think my art process can be divided into kind of two phases one of them is just the kind of the playing phase the where I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing or where I'm working towards um, and that's what you're kind of seeing me do here now which is just building up a background um, and I'm just trying to like stay out of my head and just kind of keep going with the colors and the supplies and that kind of thing and then uh, at a certain point it will be like the second phase or like the second mode of creating which is where I create still intuitively but slightly more deliberately because then I come in with a figure um, and I start working more on I don't know like focal points and also in terms of meaning I will then I think be really expressing meaning in the piece except it's it's always a bit opaque to me in a way because I'm not necessarily consciously going like oh this is the meaning I want to convey through this um, through this process or this painting or this representation of a figure or a face or whatever um, it always just kind of comes out and that is something that I really have to embrace because I sometimes get so tense I get so you know, like where I'm trying to think about what I'm going to do next instead of just trusting that by now I have painted and drawn enough faces to just kind of be able to have a go and something will come out. And I just like seriously, I fall into that trap every single time. Um, and so, um, I also wanted to ask you that, you know, if whether you like stuff like this, um, you know, obviously this is a new little series that I have been cooking up in my head and I, I love sharing the creative process. I love talking about kind of living a creative life and the struggles that we all kind of go through, both trying to be creative uh, and also just, you know, being alive as humans in this world. Um, and um, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'd be interested to know if this is something that uh, that you're interested in and if you would like me to do more of these types of videos. Um, so please let me know. Um, obviously, yeah, it's super motivating to hear 
if <laughs> when you like my videos um, and also just if there's other types of videos that you would like to see me do I, I will say though that a while back I was making videos that were more like tutorial videos where I did a voiceover basically describing step by step what I was doing and I realized that that wasn't really my jam I don't really want to teach you or people how to make art like me I mean to make art like me it's like why why would you want to um <laughs> you want <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with it but like you know don't you want to make art like you right so what I would prefer to do I guess is share kind of my approaches and my um um like to share more about what what creativity is to me and how I get into my creativity and that kind of thing um, rather than saying step by step oh this is what I did and then this is what I did um, because in a way I just you know that would only be useful if you want to make the exact same art as I do and I kind of you know that's not really what I want to do that doesn't that doesn't make my heart sing um, although I do uh, want to make some more videos as well with art techniques so kind of just standalone techniques so not um, art videos that show you how to make something start to finish step by step but more like giving you some tools some tips and tricks and that kind of thing that you can bring into your own um, your own practice because I do think that that is um, that's super helpful uh, and that's stuff that I get inspired uh, from as well um, as well as just watching people do their creative thing, that really inspires me too. Um, so this piece that I'm working on right now, I went and got my little uh, Arteza square journal, which I'm really enjoying. I really enjoy the paper in there and the chunky, chunky square format. But I had just been working on that big uh, journal where I was working on this face of a girl and I don't know, you might have seen me kind of leafing back to the previous page where I also had a similar looking girl. And I was thinking to myself, oh, they both look quite pretty. And then I was kind of feeling down on myself, like, oh my God, my, my art is getting too pretty and neat and stuff. Like, I know, right? Like, this is the type, the type of things that go through my brain. Um, not that uh, there's anything wrong with those things, but in that moment, I was like, oh, I want things to look more raw and less pretty and then I started working on this and doing a really wonky face with wonky eyes and like a um, like a kind of a line uh, the outer line of the face uh, was very um, kind of like maybe more masculine and more wonky and the, I was just able to kind of capture this um, much more loose and raw feeling in this page and I kind of I kind of marvel at how this happens because I don't really set out to do something specific it kind of just happened and I was working on top of this page where that I am um, that you saw me use at the beginning of the video where I was just like um, swatching if you can call it that some of my gouache and playing with color and seeing how those colors just look together um, kind of as an experiment but also just to kind of give my hand something to do and to give my brain a break I guess because sometimes I find that if I go straight into um, wanting to create something onto a blank page my brain works over time to second guess myself so sometimes it's good to just do things that are kind of brainless. So swatching or just playing with color or building up a background, uh, just going through techniques, that kind of thing. And, um, um, and then you kind of trick your brain into being a bit more quiet and not so critical. And then you can kind of lead yourself into uh, doing something that is more connected to feelings and emotions and expression and that kind of thing uh, because um, it's kind of like a warm-up really I mean it's funny because some concepts have such practical applications we think of them so practically like warming up um, but I guess what I'm talking about is kind of the emotional aspect 
of warming up, that you're not just doing it for a practical reason, as in like you warm up so that you can then make better art. It's also you can warm up so that you can get to that uh, emotional part of the process where you can make the art that you want to make. Um, and I, God, I forget these things so often. It's like I'm always learning things over and over again um, <laughs> and having to experience them again and going like, oh yeah, I already realized this, but I forgot about it again. So, um, yeah, and I kind of kept this quite simple. Um, I really hope uh, that you are um, enjoying this video and that you um, will be joining me for another one if I decide to do another one. Um, let me know also if there's certain topics that you'd like me to talk about. I said that I wanted to do it kind of podcast style, so um, talking about specific things. Obviously, I talked a bit about warming up and process and perfectionism uh, in this one. You know, what are the kind of things that you would like to hear me philosophize about? That'd be interesting to know. All right. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye.